Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. In this video, we're going over the best N64 emulator on PC, Mupin 64 Plus. Let's get started. All right, to kick things off, earlier on this year, I did a video on this exact topic. I covered both RetroArch as well as the standalone version. Now the RetroArch version largely remains the same, so we're not gonna tackle that in this video. However, the standalone version of Mupin 64 Plus did receive an update, and let's take a look at it. For the standalone version of Mupin 64 Plus, head on over to github.com slash loganmc10 slash m64p slash releases. I'll leave a link in the description below so you don't have to type all that out. Once you are here, something to note, this emulator is very active. It gets updated quite frequently. There are a number of different updates between when I last filmed it in May until now. So for this video, I am focused on the November 4th, 2021 post. If there are releases after this, I probably will have to do an updated video. But at this time, it's available for both Linux and Windows. I will be covering it for Windows. To download it for Windows, click on the M64P, Win64, and then all of these numbers.zip. Once you do that, the download is 41.8 megabytes. It's not very big at all. Click OK to download the file. Once you've downloaded the file, feel free to scan it for viruses if you want. From my understanding, there really shouldn't be any viruses in there. Once you've done that, extract the file into its own folder, and you should end up with something that looks like this. The next step here is to click on Mupin 64 Plus GUI. And this is your Mupin 64 Plus emulator. Once everything is opened up here, just double check the top where it says build date. So mine does say November 4th, 2021. If yours is different, your menus might be different, your settings might be different. There's a chance that everything's the same, but there's also a chance that things have changed. So the very first thing I'm gonna do here is go into settings and then controller configuration. I wanna make sure my controller is set up properly. Click on manage profiles. Now, if you're using a keyboard to play these games, click on new profile keyboard and set things up for yourself that way. If you're gonna be using a gamepad, which I highly recommend, click on new profile gamepad. From here, set your profile name. So I'm just gonna call mine Sujano and then click on the button that you want to map and press the corresponding button on your controller. It does help to have a picture of an N64 controller handy nearby just to make sure the buttons you're mapping make sense. For this video, I will be using an 8-Bit Doe Pro 2. Now, once I click on the button to map it here, it gives me five seconds to press the corresponding button on my controller. If you screw up at all and press the wrong button, just feel free to click close without saving and then start this process again. For the dead zone and analog sensitivity, I don't recommend changing this until you've played a few games and get a sense of how everything is. If you're noticing that your analog sticks aren't just the way you want, feel free to open this up and fiddle around with it a little bit until it makes sense for you. And once you're done everything here, click save and close. Now, if I go to controller one, it says profile auto. I'm gonna switch this over to my newly created profile, Sujano. For my gamepad, it is sitting at the controller that's plugged into my computer. My 8 Pro 2 does read as an Xbox 360 controller. And then for the pack in the back, I could put a rumble pack in there if I want to, or a memory pack if I want to do some saves. It's really up to you. For this video, I'm just going to flip it over to rumble. From here, I recommend launching a game. So go to file and click open ROM and then select the ROM file of your choice. For this video, I'm going to be using GoldenEye 007. So here's GoldenEye 64 up and running. You can see everything is smooth and everything is absolutely fine. My controllers are working perfectly. If you're happy with this, if you're happy with this setup, then you're pretty much good to go. Go on and enjoy some N64 games. If you want to make things look even better, then stay tuned. And if you're running into some performance issues, then definitely stay tuned. The next step here is to press escape or go into emulation and then click on stop game. And this will stop the game so we can improve the graphics or make them worse. From here, click settings and then go to core and video settings. On this first menu tab, I don't recommend changing anything at all, and that's the core tab. But on the parallel video tab, this is where we can have some fun. If you want to learn more about any of these options, just hold your mouse over it and a nice description will pop up. Now I'm going to address things if your computer is having issues running games. If things are going slowly here, try changing these options up and it might help things out. It will make your games look a little worse though. Uh, so for all of these options here, just uncheck them. So it starts out at VIAA, which is your anti-aliasing, and go right down to the bottom, uncheck all of those, and you should hopefully be in a bit better of a situation. Then open your game back up and start playing. Here's what the game looks like with those options unchecked. You can see it does look a little bit worse, but at the same time, it is still fully playable. Now, if your computer is handling these N64 games like a champ, the emulator is working great and there are no issues. Well, this is where we can have some fun. So the only real option you need to change here is upscaling. By default, it is set to one. You can change it to two, four, or eight. 
By increasing it, it increases the strain on your system. So I do recommend starting small here and working your way up. Maybe start at two or four and see how that goes. And then if everything's going good, crank it up to eight. If you're happy with two or four, just keep it there. For this video, I'm just gonna put it at four and show you the difference. To quickly get back into the game you were just playing, click File, Open Recent, and your game should be there. So here we are at four times upscaling. The game is running smoothly and it looks really good. I don't even really need to change it up more from here. I'm happy with this. If you wanna crank it up more, then by all means, crank it up more. But to me, this is absolutely fine. Now, just a couple of extra points here. If you go to File, you can save state by pressing F5 or using this option, and you can load it by pressing F7. On top of that, there is net play. I'm not going over that in this video. I'll dedicate a separate video to that. But you can play games online with friends if you want. And there's also a Discord channel, which I highly recommend joining. If you're looking for games, if you have questions, if you're running into issues, there's a lot of knowledgeable people there. Someone might actually be able to help and solve your particular issue. Just click the Join Discord channel and join it and have some fun. But anyways, that is all I've got for this video. Hopefully it was helpful to get you set up and running with Mupin 64 Plus. It's an amazing emulator and the best part about it is that it's 100% free. There is no increased monthly fee to access its services. It's just free as it is. Let me know your thoughts about Mupin 64 Plus in the comments below. Let me know what games you like to emulate with Mupin64 Plus in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button, check out my other videos. Thank you everyone, take care.